You're in the Business Insurance Zone with me, Steve Savant, National Financial Columnist and Money Color Commentator. This week on The Biz, Employee Stock Ownership Plans, and on today's show, our very special guest, Coretti Tuioti, National Recognized ESOP Expert. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Well, welcome everyone to the Business and Insurance Zone. I'm your host, Steve Savant. We're broadcasting live to a nationwide audience of financial advisors right here in Fountain Hills, Arizona, home of America's largest fountain. And with me today, Aesop Fable Expert, because there's a lot of truth <laughs> in fact. I want you to welcome Coretti <laughs> Toyoti. And I'm still learning how to speak Polynesian. Oh, so, it's a pleasure to meet you, Steve. You too. And you know, I, I, I always want to say, you know, when I, when I have a guest on, that has an area of expertise like you. You have really cut a huge swath in this area of ESOPs. And when I hear of business succession planning, I think of buy-sell agreements. I think of cross-purchase agreements. I think of stock redemption, wait-and-see trusts. I hardly hear anybody ever address ESOPs. I, I think that's the, when we, all of us have grown up mm -hmm. in the industry and that's what we were trained and taught and so mm -hmm. forth. But as you progress in your career, you get to the point where you say, what is the next step for my business client? Mm -hmm. And I think that's where most people don't know. And, and in fact, ESOP is an area that's very, very technical, very, very complex. And so most agents, most advisors mm -hmm. don't go there mm -hmm. because it's very complex. So they'd rather not go there mm -hmm. and just deal with the buy sales and what you just indicated. Well, our goal then this whole week then is to decrypt this whole Hopefully. idea, uh -huh. right? And try yeah. to demystify it because really nobody's addressing this. And I think it's because of one thing I heard you talk about before, which is most of business session planning deals with the business, mm -hmm. but the ESOP technology or the strategy actually deals with the personal business person, his own money. What's going to happen with his money, his income? How's this going to transfer to his life? And I think that's where I think people are missing it, that they don't see the application and I also enjoyed what you said, it pivots between estate planning and business succession. It's kind of in this no man's land. It can go either way, depending upon your conversation with the client. That's, that's right. It, when you, you know, you're really dealing with two things. You're dealing with uh, planning for the business and planning for families, mm -hmm. right? Legacy planning. I call it legacy planning for the business and legacy planning for the family. And so you have a business owner here who's looking at, he's, he loves his employees, he wants to take care of the employees, but he also knows that he needs to take care of his family. Mm -hmm. So the ESOP is an opportunity really to do planning along those two legacies. With an ESOP, you can provide for the employees and take out what you have built in the business and put it in a trust for the benefit of your family. So there, there's this where the estate mm -hmm. planning and uh, business succession planning interrelate. Now, when we're talking about this, I'm, I'm trying to see what my demographics are on this. When I think of small business, I mean, right now, the unified credit set 10 million married. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the, probably the new tax bracket starting at 450,000, uh, and I'm sure, I don't know if it's early AGI or MAGI, <laughs> that's a whole other <laughs> issue. Right. But, but really, where do we fall in? Where's the ESOP demographic? What kind of business, small business am I looking at? That's a very good question. I, I look at the profile of a client, the, the ideal client would be somebody with about 20 employees, between 20 mm -hmm. and 50 or even 100 employees. Uh, you're looking at a valuation of somewhere around 5 million and 10 million. And that's a space, in my experience, Steve, that so very few advisors get into. And, and the reason being is a little bit more sophisticated than what they're accustomed to. Mm -hmm. And so they often would outsource it to mm -hmm. an attorney or CPA uh, who may know something about mm -hmm. ESOP planning. So that would be, uh, in, in any industry, typically 20, to, to 100 employees, and, and you're looking at a valuation of about five to 10, to 10 mil. Now, when you, we think about that number, I mean, I think some people have given up on the estate planning just because the, they think the unified credit's so high, unless I run mm -hmm. into somebody that's got serious wealth, I'm really not gonna play. But really, you're in this middle no man's land, and you're telling me that hardly anybody's touching this. Hardly anybody. Now, mm -hmm. so, so how do I, if it's so technical though, if, if I wanna demystify it, 
is it as technical or just what are the basics that I need to know? And once I know that, I can build upon it's, my knowledge. It's, it's not as, I mean, compared to estate planning, mm -hmm. it's about the same in my opinion. I mean, we all think that estate planning for somebody with 5 million to 10 million is, is uh, very technical. Mm -hmm. In fact, most of us now know how to do it, right? We set up a trust and we either sell the, the asset to a trust or we set up a insurance trust mm -hmm. to provide for the liquidity. So it's the same process, really. It's the same concept. Mm -hmm. We have an asset here and we're looking at it, it could be worth 10 million and so we're looking into either selling it into a trust in this mm -hmm. case an, a trust for the benefit of the employees so that the owner can get out his equity or her equity mm -hmm. into his own or her own private trust mm -hmm. for the benefit of her children in an ESOP am I still doing traditional succession planning buy sell stock redemption cross purchase Absolutely. It. and what i'm using the esop as the personal remedy for some of these see issues. that's the beauty of esops is esop touches everything mm. ESOP, with with the esop you can touch estate planning you can touch buy sell planning you can touch executive uh, planning mm -hmm. anything that you do as a financial advisor an esop can touch mm -hmm. but the critical thing is the key thing is it allows for you to to be separated from every, everything else that you're doing. Mm -hmm. So when you meet with a business owner, they're sitting down with you and their interest is, I, I want to do something for myself. I love my employees. I've got a good group of, 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 of middle management, but I'd like to find a way. I don't have a buyer yet. Or, or, or in this market, I don't have a cash buyer. What is the best way for me to mm -hmm. exit my business? Well, an ESOP could be a way for him to exit his business or would her you, business. Would you lead with that mm -hmm. ESOP rather than business succession or estate planning? I certainly would. Uh, the, reason be, the reason is that so very few people understand ESOP. So the minute you say ESOP to a client, they're saying, what is that? Mm -hmm. yeah, and do you have to explain? I mean, I, we're so acronym. Do you have mm -hmm. to explain what it means? Yes, you do. And essentially, what you're saying is it's an, it's an opportunity for you to allow your, your owners, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, your, your employees to purchase your stock. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and they'll say, well, how can my employees afford my and stock? we show them how to do that. Yeah, we show them how to do it. Well, when we come back from the break, we're going to address all that is ESOP. We're going to talk about these plans and how they integrate with estate planning and income. And don't forget to jump on our line at IULUniversity.com for the best education, training, and sales support when it comes to life insurance for retirement income. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Did you know the average 401k runs out of money just seven to eight years into retirement? Time Magazine, The Wall Street Journal, and many other publications have warned of the difficulty of saving with a 401k. But what if there was a way to create tax-free lifetime retirement income with no stock market risk? Good news, there is. You know, living in fear of the next market dive is not the way I want to live my life. Why would I go out there and take on risk when I don't need to? I have a lot less stress knowing I can't lose any more of my retirement savings in the stock market. Call now to receive your free, no obligation analysis of what this retirement vehicle could do for you. A comparison to your current retirement plan and a free video that explains this exciting opportunity. Start planning a retirement you can enjoy instead of worrying about future tax increases and stock market losses. Creating income that will last your entire life is the most important thing you'll ever do. Take control of your future. Call now for your free analysis, comparison, and video. Well, welcome back to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm your host, Steve Savant. And remember, you can order today's giveaway at thebiz.tv. And what are we giving away today? Our mini manual on ESOPs. Just go ahead and write me at thebiz.tv uh, the and I'll send it to you absolutely free. And remember, before moving forward with any of the ideas we talk all this week, especially this week, Always consult your tax advisor and broker dealer compliance officer. And we're talking about how ESOPs work within your plan. And I think this could be, could be for some, this could be the niche market you've been looking for to build out your practice and really promote your, your business. And this could be the way to go. And I love how you said, you know, because a lot of people I've met, producers are estate planners. Mm -hmm. Some are business succession planners. Some are retirement income. But this is one of the few areas where this platform is more of a hub and you can break out to those different arenas. 
And to me, that's a pretty wild thing to think about that I can now use something that is distinctive. I looked on the internet. I didn't see a lot of traffic on this. Not too many. Not so too many. so this is kind of virgin territory. It is virgin territory. It's huge territory, in my, in my opinion. If you look at there are about 10,000 ESOPs today, and most of those ESOPs are very, very large companies. There are very, very few um, small ESOPs. And, and just a few years ago, you know, the most recent ESOP that I set up was a $5 million company. It was just a husband and wife with few investable assets. But they had this company, Steve, that's mm -hmm. worth about $5 million after the valuation. And they were in the mid-50s, and they were talking to me and my partner about how to exit out. How could they take their equity out and, and, and divest their, mm -hmm. their, their equity into a portfolio, investment portfolio, and at the same time maintain the entity for the benefit of the employees. And that's where the ESOP came in. Now, when we're talking about ESOPs, I noticed that when I was doing some of my R&D research development on this uh, for our show, I noticed that you have to, is it really exclusively for S-Corps? Does it have to be an S-Corp to make it work? Not at all. In fact, uh, the most common uh, prior to the S-Corp is the C-Corp. Mm -hmm. And, and the rules apply differently to various entities. With mm -hmm. a C-Corp, there is a benefit to that because you can actually, with a C-Corp ESOP, a, an owner could sell his stock to the company mm -hmm. and receive a cash for it and then roll that out into a tax-free rollout. Mm -hmm. So he, pays, he or she pays no taxes on, on the cash as long as the cash is reinvested in, in securities. Mm -hmm. in domestic securities. So they they have the benefit of deferring the capital gain now, on the C Corp. Let's talk about ESOP. that for a second. Is that because I'm really taking my company stock and exchanging it for another stock, you know, in an equity position in the market? Yes. Is that the why it's well, the re transfers tax Remember, the idea here is you have an owner who's, if you look at the entire portfolio, maybe their business comprises maybe 50% of his, his or her investment portfolio. So there's huge risk there. Mm -hmm. The ESOP is an, op is an opportunity for that particular owner to divest mm -hmm. his or her equity in the company, re minimize the risk, and then move that equity out into a diversified mm -hmm. Uh, portfolio spreading the risk outside. So it, yeah. if, if they're doing a C-Corp ESOP, mm -hmm. they have the opportunity to sell their stock, let's say 30%. Mm -hmm. let's, so let's use an example of a $10 million company. So I have an opportunity as an owner to sell my, say 30% initially to the company or to the ESOP trust, 30% of my stock, so that's $3 million. And in return, I get cash from the company as a result of this purchase. I have the ability to transfer to roll this into a, in a diversified investment portfolio, uh, domestic stocks, and defer the capital gain. And mm -hmm. right now, the capital gain just went up, so it's a tax-free sale. Mm -hmm. And as long as I never liquidate that stock, mm -hmm. I'll never pay taxes. I can receive the benefits of dividends from, this, from that investment portfolio for the rest of my life, but I will never pay the capital gains stock until I liquidate that mm -hmm. particular stock. And that's the C-Corp scenario. That's a C-Corp scenario. What's the S-Corp scenario? The like? S-Corp scenario is out of the, in 1998, Congress enacted uh, the law that allowed for an S-Corporation to be an ESOP. So in other words, I, let's, let's use myself as an example again. If I have an S Corp that's worth five million, I have the ability to, with my employees, to create a trust, sell 100% of my S Corp stock to the trust in return for a note. And now the S Corp, because it is a qualified plan, now pays no taxes on its profits. Hmm. And because it pays no taxes on its profits, the, the, the ESOP trust is, is is able to reduce its obligation or to me via, the, via a note by paying me payments over the years. Mm -hmm. We will have a term of years in which we will, the, the ESOP will pay me the payments and it's, I'll pay capital gain on those payments. But the corporation now operates as a tax-free entity and it's pay, it pays no taxes on its profits. So it's got the cash flow and it will have the ability to pay down the note over a period of time. And that's a huge so, advantage so to me as an use a C Corp, I could use an S Corp. I could use an S. Mm -hmm. Anything to do with is partnership kind of off the table on any side? Partners is off the table. So I you can't do, use mm -hmm. it for that. Right. How about closely held, where I might just have two maybe owners, brother, maybe brother owners, close oh, family? You, you can have as many owners as possible. You just have to have at least 20 employees mm -hmm. in there to make it make sense for mm -hmm. an ESOP 
to be set up in a company. And you, of course you have to be profitable mm -hmm. um, and you have to have uh, consistently a, a very strong management team in place and so forth. So all these elements must be in place. So a, a five employee mm -hmm. partnership may not work. So, mm -hmm. so you're looking at a minimum 20 employees company. What I'm looking at ESOPs as kind of a pe market penetrating idea. And especially because I can pivot to different things like estate planning, business succession planning, or a retirement model for income for during my retirement years. I'm trying to figure out, I'm going to need to partner with a guy like you because I'm not going to be able to pull this off on my first couple times. I, I know that's for sure. When we come back from our, our, our tomorrow show, we're going to be sitting and talking with Coretti on more of how ESUPs can work in your practice. You can hop out to our show and watch all of it. And that's the buzz on the biz for today. Get in the zone. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use.